feel it, the conflict is becoming apparent in our culture. It reminds me of those words of John Paul II, we're now living in the final confrontation between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between the church and the anti-church, between Christ and the antichrist. And if we don't choose to know God's word, to believe God's word, to follow God's word, we're gonna be a sitting duck for all kinds of confusion, all kinds of disorder. Those are really important choices that people have to make. And these choices are difficult. Who am I gonna marry? What kind of life am I gonna live? How am I gonna raise my kids? What am I gonna do with my time, my talent, and my treasure? And I have to make a choice today. Jesus says to each one of us, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. The question is, do we want it? Welcome, friends, to The Choices We Face. I'm Peter Herbeck, and I'm here today with Randy Rouse. Randy is the CEO and president of Life Teen, which is a dynamic national and international movement that reaches young people in the Catholic Church to help bring them to life and to discipleship in Christ. Welcome, Randy. It's great to be here. Yeah, Thanks, Peter, I'm, for I'm really me. excited you're here. I mean, our parish in Ann Arbor use, you know, is a part of Life Teen. It's been blessed by Life Teen over the years, and it's, it's just really a great ministry. But before we talk about Life Teen, which I really want to get to, okay. is tell us a little bit about yourself and your own journey. Yeah, I, um, I'm a convert to the Catholic faith. I grew up uh, in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, and was Lutheran growing up, but uh, my family wasn't very active in the faith. We would only go to church at Christmas and Easter, so we would affectionately call our family the Creaster family. The Creasters, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so when I uh, was in, after I graduated from high school, uh, decided to go south for college for pretty shallow reasons because it was warmer. And uh, my best friend recommended going to the University of Alabama. So I ended up uh, enrolling in the University of Alabama. And uh, the Catholic population at the time at the University of Alabama was 2%. And uh, That's so, the Bible Belt right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Uh, in my journey, I started dating a girl, and by all means, she was Catholic, and uh, she wasn't just a nominal Catholic, just going through the motions. She was pretty on fire, and after about a month of dating, she noticed that I didn't go to church, and she asked, uh, would I like to go to Mass with her? So I thought I was making every brownie point in the book to, <laughs> to go to Mass with her, yeah. and, and uh, we went to Mass, and afterward, we went out to lunch, and after we ordered, she started quizzing me on the Catholic faith. Uh, asking me uh, on the mass and she asked me, you know, what was the first reading? And I just stared at her and what was the responsorial psalm? And all the way through the gospel and the homily and all I could tell her that I thought the homily was good but I couldn't remember even what the priest had said. I don't know if you've ever gone and zoned out at mass <laughs> sure. but that was one yeah. of those experiences. Yeah. And she looked at me and said a really important thing in my life. She said, how'd you like to go again next week and try? So rather than writing me off and calling me a loser or whatever it was, uh, she, she saw something in me and uh, so every Sunday we'd go to Mass, and if I could have taken a notebook and not look like the biggest nerd in Mass, I, was, I knew I was going to get quizzed. And uh, <laughs> So I started coming alive in the faith that way, and then a couple of years later, after continually going to Mass, joined an RCIA class. And, was uh, it like the student chapel or something on campus, or where was that? No, it was, uh, it was after I had graduated, oh, after you graduated. and okay. I was living yeah. in Houston, Texas, okay. and um, this priest was leading us in an RCIA class, and he started to try to talk about the Eucharist. And he was a, a real dry wit of a priest, so he was reminded me a lot of like a David Letterman. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, he just started weeping and crying. Uh, and he said, I'm sorry, they really don't give us the words to fully adequately describe what you receive when you receive the Eucharist, what it is. It's a faith call on our part. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at that moment, it just really hit me that it's real. And uh, so I went up to him right after the class and I'm like, I, I want to be Catholic now. I want to receive. Wow. And he said, well, you got to wait till Easter. And I, I did have to wait till Easter. Being a priester Being it was a only Christer. appropriate to wait till Easter, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I became Catholic. And one of the things he told me right before I um, became Catholic was that we didn't need any more like uh, mediocre Catholics or ones that just go through the motions, that I needed to be active in something. I was the only person that was coming into the church that wasn't coming in to be married uh, in like, you know, for like that, yeah, I was the, sure. the solo person on that journey in that whole group of about 30 people becoming Catholic yeah. that was doing it out of just a desire to be a Catholic. Yeah. And uh, so he told me that we needed to, I needed to do something for the church. And so I thought back about my high school years and 
Uh, I was a pretty good kid in high school. I didn't do a lot of stupid things, but uh, I never knew anybody in my high school that was into their faith or even thought that was important or they didn't speak of it. And I thought, wow, maybe I could reach out in youth ministry. Mm. Uh, that seems like an area, uh, if I could have learned about the Eucharist and had this relationship with Christ at an earlier age, I felt like I could be much further in my faith. So I thought, if I'm gonna volunteer somewhere, I'll, I, I'll invest in youth. And, and that's what started me that was on, a the, bold move. on so, the journey. So to how youth. did that go? Well, uh, you know, at first, I think I came in with a lot of uh, arrogance and confidence and, uh, you know, <laughs> feeling like uh, I'm so such an on-fire Catholic. I just learned so much about the faith. You should put me up front and let me, let me do everything, you know, that I know I can do and I can teach this. And uh, a priest friend of ours, uh, um, at, at this point, I had... Um, uh, I didn't marry the girl that introduced me to the Catholic faith, but I, I got, I got married shortly after uh, to another on fire Catholic. Okay. And we both volunteered in youth ministry, and we were a little frustrated that we weren't getting called on to, to do any leadership role. And uh, the priest looked at us and he said, "Can you just be happy in being in relationship with young people? Your main job working in youth ministry is leading teens closer to Christ in relationship." And if you can't be satisfied in that, it's not about being up front. It's about being in relationship. Hmm. And that's always stuck with me. I think it, it drives me every day is, uh, is, you know, that ministry happens by other people experiencing it through other people that are vibrantly living it, but in relationship, not yeah. some distant thing. But yeah, it's ongoing. contagious. Like C.S. Lewis used to say, you start spreading the good infection in the context of that kind of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. God in his great sense of humor took me up on all my uh, my dares to say I could lead. And after we really dove into having more relational ministry with teenagers um, was led to, uh, you know, a, a priest coming up to me uh, after morning mass and saying, how would you like to be the youth leader uh, at the parish? And I started a, a career in youth ministry, which, uh, you know, uh, has been uh, just one of the most uh, beautiful things from my life and uh, has really impacted uh, so my what, journey. So when did that transition happen? Like how many years ago was that? When you transitioned into full-time ministry? Yeah, it was back in 1990. So in I'm 90. one of those golden oldies in youth yeah. ministry yeah. that God just keeps uh, using in different ways. And, uh, mm. and I'm thankful for that. You know, it's powerful, Randy. You just mentioned three priests in your story who had, a, had significant roles in helping you really hear the Lord. You know, thanks be to God for the priests out there who are just alive in the Lord and they're ready to call on a young man like you were and look where, where the Lord brought you, you know? So you started in full-time youth ministry and then when did Life Teen come into the picture? Well, I was, uh, as a youth minister, I was standing on a basketball court uh, shooting free throws and a teenager walked up to me and he had moved to our parish in Marietta, Georgia, uh, where, I, where I currently live. Uh, He'd moved from a parish that implemented Life Teen uh, out in Tucson, Arizona. And what he told me was this. He said, um, first he said, I like what you're doing here, but I noticed the teens aren't really into going to mass. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's true. And he said, um, I don't know what Life Teen is or anything, but I know that we started our parish. And all I can tell you is if we were to hand the kids at our parish a calendar, the first thing they'd write on it would be to go to mass. And that really yeah. stuck with me because I think secretly in youth ministry, you always wonder, you want to lead teens closer to Christ, not to yourself. And you always right. worry about that. Like, are you doing something to be popular or that young people sure. accept you sure. or that? And then when you leave, would they still have this relationship? So uh, who are it, they attached to? Are they attached to you because you're kind of cool? Right. Or are they attached to the Lord? Right. Exactly. exactly. So yeah. what I loved about finding out about Life Teen was that it was all about the sacraments. It was connecting teens to the sacraments. And so when a teen has a storm in their life, where would they go? You take them to the Eucharist. And it's much like when we were at World Youth Day and Pope Francis in, in, uh, when, when we were in Madrid and there was a big storm that came up on Saturday night when the Pope was about to give yeah. his speech and he had to, he put his speech away and, and he, you know, sat up there while the storm came. And then when the storm moved on, you know, the Pope prayed for the storm to leave and it did. And, yeah. and then he brought the Blessed Sacrament out. He didn't continue his speech. He knew that what teens needed in storms is, is, that, uh, is, hmm. is that relationship with Jesus in the Eucharist. And, hmm. and so uh, that's what I loved about Life Teen, finding out about it was that uh, I felt like it connected them to the, the power of the church, to the sacraments. And, and, and that's uh, the thing that drives us today. Yeah. And so you, you brought Life Teen to your parish. Is that what happened then? We did. And then, yeah. and then you went from there 
you became the CEO and the president in a nutshell. How'd that happen? That's, that's a big jump. <laughs> well, the, the three founders for Life Teen moved on 10 years ago, and uh, I had been involved in different levels. Uh, uh, we have eight children, so I know my real youth ministry, Wonderful. my real youth group yeah. is at home. Yeah. So I knew that uh, I'm pretty much an all-in person, uh, and it's hard to yeah. not, not be at night with where the teenagers are. So being the parish youth minister, I, I did that for 11 years. And then um, it was with my growing family, it was really time for me to be home more. And God keep provi kept providing through Life Teen opportunities for me to be home with my family um, and to lead more on a national level. And then 10 years ago, uh, the three founders of Life Teen moved on to other things. And the board of directors asked if I'd you know, come in and serve as the, as the president of Life Teen. And I uh, prayed about it with my wife and we just felt called to continue to give and to try to serve the best way we could. Well, thanks for saying yes, because Life Teen has had a huge impact on lots of people. And I know you brought a video with you to give us a kind of picture. Could yeah. you explain a little bit, set it up for us before we take a peek at it? Yeah, this is a video that uh, we parishes would look at, maybe to introduce Life Teen to them, to get a feel of what's going on with this gigantic movement of Life Teen now, because it's okay. really growing. Good. Well, let's take a look at it. Great. Well, Randy, that was really fantastic. It, it just a sh it told a big story. I mean, you had New York Cardinal, Boston Cardinal. You had kids from all over the place, joy, sacraments. It was beautifully done, beautifully done. Tell us just more about Life Teen and really what's on your heart? What would you most like to say today about it, really? Yeah, Life Teen is a parish-based movement. It's our goal to build up parish-based youth ministry. And so we provide resources and experiences for parishes that help them lead teenagers closer to Christ. It's what drives us every day. And so uh, we have catechetical resources that we send to parishes, both for high school and for middle school. We have uh, Life Teen is what we call the high school uh, program. And then EDGE is what we call the middle school program. And we've seen kind of an age compression with young people these days. And what maybe five years ago was a 10th or 11th grader, what they were experiencing societally with the exper uh, exposure to things like pornography and all of the pressures and issues is really what a sixth grader now is experiencing. Oh and it's kind of you know, we're hearing that from priests, Sad from the sobering. confessional and everything. And so we've developed a, a, a large group setting catechesis model edge for uh, middle schoolers and it's having a profound impact. So we do, we do uh, resources that help people spend less time planning and more time in relational ministry with okay. teenagers. So they can use these resources as a way of being very successful in how they would create parish youth ministry. Are the, are the resources videos or is it a whole combination of things? It's a whole combination. Okay. I, I th I, we still think the most uh, vital way to catechize people is through you living your faith and through people getting up and talking about their faith and, the, and the people being in relationship, young people being in relationship with adults that are living their faith vibrant. So we have a core team of people at parishes that help with this ministry and we set them up with tools to be very successful. And then Life Teen hosts some events around the country that parishes can come to. We have a partnership with Franciscan University of Steubenville with their youth conference. Oh.